y'all, this is Anna Alexander. Welcome back to The Basement while we are here for season one, episode seven of Lucifer, which is another episode. A lot of you all are like, so excited. I can't wait for you to get to this one. We met Chloe's mother, Rebecca De Mornay. Will we see her again? You know, I don't know yet. And Dan, okay, so this is the episode with Dan and Malcolm in the fight in the, where do they go from here? And Maze made a friend in Trixie. I love that scene. I love that scene so much that she didn't even think to treat Trixie like a child. She immediately just treated her like another patron, another lost soul who has wandered into the bar. And I love that for some reason. I know, but I'm excited to get to it. And I know you're ready for me to get to it as well. So we are going to get under the big cozy blankets because there's still a chill in the air, even though it's spring. Spring has sprung. I have some beverages. Uh, you're gonna remember full episode watch long is available on Patreon. And if you have not noticed, I am kissing. I am within breathing distance of 10,000 subscribers. So if you, uh, you push that little button, I'd be greatly appreciated. I don't know what happens. I kind of hope like confetti bursts out of my laptop. I don't know, that would be hysterical. That's all, I think I think that's it. Okay, let's get to it. Oh, they continue to drink though. She continued to drink? <laughs> or is that just left over from his earlier entertainments? Oh God, what have I done? Don't worry, my father's the forgiving sort. Please tell me, we didn't. Oh, did we ever? Oh, don't do this to I'm her. So sure we made Rosemary's baby. <laughs> Our detective, it was extraordinary. Whatever happened last night, don't tell me. I'd rather not know. Well, then we didn't do the nasty. We didn't? Nope. I turned you down cold. And what you did? Why, why am I naked? What do you mean you don't remember the part where you passed out, woke up again, shouted at me? It's too hot in this five star hole. Oh, I believe it was. <laughs> then tore your clothes off and proceeded to hog the bed. <laughs> not wanting to have sex with you, thing. Well, here's the strange part. This gave me quite a rush. Can't explain it. I've been thinking about it all night. Last night was a fluke for both of us. The fact that he's not gonna want to have sex with her is a fluke. Put on some pants, pumpkin. You're on speaking terms. Perhaps I'll fill you in. Where are you going? <laughs> Why do you ask? You're still reporting back to my brother. <laughs> you can't be mad at me forever. <laughs> oh, but I can. It's one of the luxuries of being the devil. I believe you left these after our sleepover last night. What's the hole at the back for? Jesus. Not mine. Those are not mine. <laughs> this is the Dunlear Foundation. They help the homeless and the underprivileged. So, who's the dashing corpse? Tim Dunlear himself. Oh. Ooh. Former NBA star, notorious playboy. He was into drugs, gambling, women. So Lucifer should have known who this man was. He dedicated himself to philanthropy. He was beloved. Oh, bad boy turned good. It's interesting. He sponsored me to come to LA after the earthquake in Haiti. Tim was my mentor. Handsome Ooh. and saintly. Did Mr. Dunlear ever speak of a certain philanthropic high after one of his selfless acts? You know, for example, say, when he chose not to sleep with a drunken woman. Jeez. You are nothing like Tim Dunlear. Bad boy with a heart of gold. I am everything like Tim. Only you could turn a tragic death into an excuse to talk about you. He can take anything to talk about him. Do you really think you're gonna get away with this? Probably not. As much as I hate Lucifer, I'm not gonna let you kill what him. What is this plan, Malcolm? What is this plan? But you know who would want him dead? Someone who's jealous. Someone who hates the fact that he's clearly got a thing for his ex -wife. Unless. Someone whose fingerprints I put all over the murder weapon. <laughs> Unless he shoots Lucifer and then he shoots Dan as if he was so distraught he had to after what he had done. If they had just asked for help, he would have given them anything. What kind of person would do something like this? Well, how much time do you that have? That guy, the sweater. 
I don't know. I don't trust that tie sweater combo. He's got two patterns, right? One on the shirt, one on the tie. This is an active crime scene. We can't have an event here. No, that wouldn't be right. Well, I just happen to own the preeminent party venue in Los Angeles. You can hold your benefit at my club. <laughs> no, okay. What is with you today? It was rather benevolent of me, offering up Lux, don't you think? I'm not feeling the same rush as before. Perhaps I'm going to have to up my game. Whatever you say, St. Lucifer. Because before, he did what was right. And now he's just trying to gain brownie points. It's different. Good deeds do bring an amount of personal satisfaction to those who engage in them. I'm intrigued by her blouse. I'm getting distracted by all the clothes. You've identified quite strongly with this man. Yes, yes, a man of honor. Mm. But true good needs to come from a place of selflessness, authenticity. Authenticity. I authentically want people to applaud the real me. The devil gets a terrible rap. But goodness isn't a toy. Well, the way I'm going to play with it, it is. I'm in between gigs. I'm no thief, I'm an actor. At Narcon, party of five. Look me up. I love LA, even the homeless have an IMDB page. I swear I didn't do nothing. Witnesses put you at the scene. He was already dead. Been like that for a bit. Rigor mortis has set in. I also did a guest spot on CSI. <laughs> Two was my buddy. What? And I rewarded that with stealing his things? Stealing from his cold, dead corpse. Tim didn't care about stuff. Give me the shirt off his back. I also know what it's like to be without a home. My father kick me out it's very traumatic much like tim done there i'd like to do whatever it takes not literally not literally as you can see the devil does indeed wear prada i was wondering when that joke was gonna come up seriously just the other day oh what the hell that's gratitude for telling us everything you know um, i don't think this man can fit your well tailored outfit there lucifer and he's naked Another act of selfless benevolence. Another good deed, but still no rush like before. Am I doing this wrong? In so many ways. You're not getting in my car like that. That's right. His scars. Turns out your husband was dead before our homeless thespian pilfered his valuables. Did Tim have any enemies? Anyone that would want to hurt him? No, absolutely not. Who is this guy rushing up behind him? Counsel for the Foundation and the Dunleavers. This won't take long, Mr. Fleming. Well, you're absolutely correct, because my client is done here. I'm just here to talk to Vanessa about the gala. Yes, of course. Lovely. <laughs> if you have any questions, you talk to me. All right. Can you establish Vanessa's whereabouts at the time of Tim's death? But one quarter of murders are committed by family members. Yes, and half by acquaintances. Mm, so where was you? Where were you? Where were you the night of Tim's death? <laughs> Did you ever fight with Tim? Last night, Tim told me I might not be receiving a scholarship money bonus. I got angry. Oh, I would get angry, upset as well. He is a long way from home for that. I want you to tell me more about Tim and his relationship with Vanessa. What was it like? Great. When the cameras were on. And when they were off. Oh. <laughs> He had a lot to say about the Dunlear's perfect marriage. Why did he change into a... Tim hadn't slept at home in months. Green. He picked a green jacket for this. What did you get from Vanessa? Yes, she asked me to have lunch with the golden donors of the foundation on her behalf. Released. What better way to get into on the murder than a gaggle of high society frenemies? Oh. It's all women? Well, I'm here for you, Gail. You can tell me anything. You are a good man. Yeah, not quite the rush I was looking for, but uh, when in Rome. <laughs> Some more than others. So you heard about Donna Gray? Oh, yeah. And when they started sleeping together, poor Vanessa. Wow. Tim turned Donna down cold. Not that it's any of your business. <gasps> oh. This is taking too long. Maybe you should do your hypnotism eye voodoo thing to get them talking. <laughs> Don't worry, detective. They'll be a spectacle. If I give them what they want, they'll give us what we want. Hello, ladies. Huge <laughs> <laughs> magic! Uh, you've all given so generously over the years to the Dunleer <laughs> Foundation. 
In honor of our fallen hero, I now give you a gift in return. <laughs> Me. <laughs> oh, jeez. Gosh, you're lovely, aren't you? When the day is through, try to Stop What is wrong with you? What's up with you, sir? Why, why are you enjoying yourselves? Tim is dead. Why are you there then, sir? And I give you option D. I love you. Thank you. Love you. I loved him. Kyle. Tim Dunley was a hero to all of us. No, no. You don't understand. <laughs> Tim and I were in love. In love. Oh. What about Vanessa? Did she know? You know, they, they had an arrangement. Tim wanted it kept secret. And Vanessa agreed. So what was Vanessa doing in the meantime? Were you aware of anyone that would want to blackmail him or threaten to go to the press? No. The lawyer. Mm. Except. <laughs> Maybe this evidence might be. <laughs> I have no idea what it means. It's actually the last I ever heard from him before. One thing I know about kimchi fried rice. Dude, Malcolm. He almost died. Although some Tom Kai soup sounds really good right now. Hmm. You know what happens when you die? There's a terrorist in two blocks from my house. You go to hell. In my case, it was for a couple of seconds. Down there, though, it was me. Why are you monologuing here, Malcolm? There's a door just for you. And inside, hell uses what you love against you. They starved me. No food. For 30 seconds. 30 seconds. You need help. Oh! <laughs> you always were a scrappy <laughs> one. So I made a deal. And all I gotta do is put a bullet in Lucifer. When I pull the trigger. And then you'll really go to hell when he dies. Really, like. It's not going to keep him out of hell forever. He's got to die at some point. Mr. Fleming, what are you doing here? Yeah, what are you doing at this police officer's house? That your client knows more than she's letting on about her husband's death. Vanessa Dunley's entire world has fallen apart. Who gave her the, the address? Oh, uh, uh. Every cent that Tim had goes back into that foundation. Because now that Tim's gone, you took control. That's an interesting turn of events. You are messing with the wrong people, detective. Back off. Sure, because you told me to. Oh, you'd never know that Lux was a den of iniquity, would you? Oh, this just looks wrong. Even if Vanessa is guilty, this is a woman who's denied herself carbs since the 90s and stayed married to a gay man. If she doesn't want to talk, she won't. Okay, maybe I can't get them to talk, but you can. Come on, I've seen you do it dozens of times. Oh, she's relying on Lucifer's gifts now. Tim Dunley may be dead, but his legacy lives on, and right now, he needs to go change into his tux. The greater good would be parking your ego and helping catch the bad guy. The old Lucifer would have known that. I miss him, by the way. At least he had my back. Um, he's not acting that different than I've noticed than he has before. Just not so willing to get to the <laughs> purpose, the motivation of the bad guys. You ruined my life. The least I could do is ruin your night. Oh, look at her go. So you came here because, because you have nowhere else to go? Yes, I do. I have lots of places to go. Lots of places. And because you have no one else to talk to either. <laughs> Says the angel sitting here eating a medium rare steak by himself. With a huge ass pickle. Which fine dining establishment serve a huge ass pickle with their steaks? Is that what I saw? My definition of excitement is fun, danger, sex. You are none of those things. <laughs> Yes, I am. Give me one example. Yeah. 
You know that story about Lucifer and the goat? He was the goat? No. Word got around. <gasps> he hates the goat thing. <laughs> I know! <laughs> you know, I've waited a thousand years to tell someone that. <laughs> tell me more, sir. Leave the bottle. We raised money to buy land to build a school. Maybe that's what the text of the barren field was. That photo was from a few days ago. The school would be almost finished by now. Unless it was never built. Somebody took the money. I need the foundation raised. Or to someone else. And you're gonna face them all by yourself, Chloe. I don't know if this is the smartest move. But I do know what you desire. What is it you think I desire? To do good. To help people. And apparently you don't charge for your services here at the Foundation. Yeah, you protect your clients like a bulldog. But underneath it all, you're a big softie, aren't you? But Vanessa does. What the hell does that mean? I think Tim Dunley looked into these financials and figured it out. And when he realized where the money went, he confronted Vanessa and she killed him. If Vanessa transferred money to herself, it'll show up in her personal financial records, which you have access to. You want me to violate my client's trust? Or you just get a warrant for this, Chloe? I mean, I think there is another more police procedural way to go about getting that info. The plastic fork, the patience. What's a plastic fork? That fork would have snapped. I would have gone out a side window because the door is kind of obvious. Or not, I guess. Detective, that you? Hope you come to your senses. Oh, jeez. Who? Oh, anybody can come up this elevator then? I'm sorry, strange, disheveled gunman. Have we met? <laughs> strange, dis strange, disheveled man. I should also mention that if you pull that trigger, it's a one way ticket to eternal damnation. Oh, I'm not going to hell. <laughs> See? I made a deal with an angel, and I've got orders to take you out. Hmm. My holier-than-now brother has hired someone to kill me. Well, this really is opposite day, isn't it? <laughs> it's funny how things seem so much clearer in the dark. <gasps> is that all you got? Well, most people haven't been to hell and back. <laughs> Right, then what do you get in return, Malcolm? Well, your brother doesn't kill me. Stay out of hell, live out my life. And then what, though? You've been duped, Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Angels can't take a mortal life. It's dad's rules. Sorry. Even if you do kill me, what happens when you do die? <laughs> You'll still go back to hell, Malcolm. There's nothing that my brother can do to prevent that. Except now this is my Pentecostal coin. I was going to use it to get back to hell eventually. I suppose you could use it to get out of hell too. One time offer. <sighs> is that the only coin he has? Who's in the car? I have a suspicion, but I'm not certain. There you are. Can't very well start our party without our guest of honor. Oh, jeez. Are you okay? No. Yes, I just needed a little pick-me-up. It's been an exhausting day. I think we'll all deserve a vacation after tonight. Now, Lucifer has not heard Chloe's theory, has he? No, I own a small ranch outside of Buenos Aires. Lovely. Mm. I know some folks who moved to Buenos Aires back in the day. Oh, good people? Nazis. A nasty bunch of miscreants hiding in plain sight. Gosh, they got away with murder. You 
did kill your husband, didn't you? Whoop, whoop, whoop. To admit, I'm not entirely sure why, but Detective Decker will figure it out. She always does. Everybody loved Tim, and he asked for nothing in return, not even his own happiness. How about we go downstairs, see this night through, and then... Oh, hmm. bloody hell! <laughs> Will this take him out? Will this take him out, or is Chloe not close enough? Oh, and is Dan going to think it was Malcolm that shot him? <gasps> oh, oh, oh. What are you doing here? Make him stop Malcolm. He's paying to shoot you. He's taken care of. How? Well, I made him an offer that he couldn't. Uh, you know the line. You look terrible, by the way. Rough day at the office. I was trying to save your ass, dude. If you'll excuse me, I've got a charity to attend and a killer to punish. How do I look? <laughs> Pretty good, actually. Yes, I thought as much. <laughs> have a drink. Two, if you like. I have the whole bottle, pumpkin. I would also like to thank our host, Mr. Morningstar. He was going to say a few words, but unfortunately, he's been- Right on time. Such a well-preserved crowd. Love your work, Dr. Brockman. <laughs> We're all here to honor Tim Dunley's legacy. And what better way to do that than to reveal his killer? Tell them all your nasty desires. No need. We already have everything. <laughs> See? Told you she'd figure it out. <laughs> sleep with my assistant mm. that money should go to me not those kids oh <gasps> to me and not those kids it wasn't like he was giving it to a mistress he was giving it to charity charitable events <laughs> oh maze oh maze and i bed head when i say it Talking again? Oh. Mm. Well, life's too short to hold grudges. Since he's almost killed twice. I mean, you'd have to do something pretty extraordinary to wipe this slate clean. No. Wow. I had sex with your brother. <laughs> <laughs> I was his inside woman, and now I'm yours. Yes. Well, I suppose that could come in handy, especially since he just tried to kill me. But I don't understand. H how could you still be alive? Well, that is the question, isn't it, Maze? Why is it that sometimes I'm immortal? <laughs> oh. And other times I'm all too human. Well, let's do a chart. Oh, that's interesting. Let's figure out where the patterns may lie. I need to go and test a theory. So what happens if Maze gets killed? Does she go back to hell? Is she demon born? I've been watching too many shows set in hell that all have different rules. Listen, detective. I want, oh. Sorry, no, you. I think us, our thing, maybe it goes beyond just work or sex. I can let my guard down with you. I don't do that with anyone else. You make me vulnerable. Detective. If it's any consolation to your pride. It appears you make me vulnerable too. Mm-hmm. 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 I feel as if we hit on a gas pedal somewhere in character development between the last two episodes. And I don't know why and why it's striking me as odd. Because yes, do I like character growth happening at a decent pace? Yes. But when you, okay, put yourself in Chloe's shoes. Here's this man who claims to be the devil. 
incredibly charming, it's a little wacky, a little zany, always seems to be upbeat. Lucifer never seems to be down or depressed or anything like that. Bit childish. From what I've seen, he hasn't really changed as far as their interactions that much. It appears he's trying to do things that would make him be a better man, but because he's doing them for the wrong reasons, they hit weird. So when she says, he make, you make me feel vulnerable, why? He doesn't ever talk down to her. Slightly sexist, maybe anti-feminist co comments happened at the beginning, but not so much anymore. He just seems to allow her to be her because he appreciates that. That's what he finds intriguing is that she's sh no artifice there when it comes to Chloe. So did Dan not make her feel the same way? Nobody else has? It's my thought. That is my thought. It's like, why? What specifically about Lucifer has given her the suddenish, suddenish change of heart? And also, I don't think he doesn't necessarily make her job more difficult because we can see, especially in this episode, her relying on his gifts to get information a little bit faster. So when you're thinking of six seasons, breaking things down, they didn't offer season four, whatever. So my thought was, okay, obviously from the start, the story creators were, we wanted to ship Chloe and Lucifer. So how far do we get before Chloe and Lucifer become Chloe and Lucifer? And then what? Do we want that? I kind of don't want that. I just kind of want them to be best buds. I don't need them to be romantically together. I just want them to be friends. Because it seems like close Lucifer needs a friend. He has Maze, but Maze has that caveat of she's beholden to him for some reason. So she's not necessarily a true friend. I want him and Maze to have good decent relationships. Yeah, that's it. And that's what, I'm, that's what I'm here for. I wanna see that. <laughs> I want them to see them become people and not, I don't know what's the, what, what other word it would be, but you, maybe you can guess what I'm saying. You can guess what I'm thinking. They're not gods, they're not deities. You know what I mean? Multifaceted, yeah. Which we're getting, we're getting. They've always had it, now we're just seeing it revealed. Maybe that's it. I don't know, I don't know. I think I need some protein to battle the wine I just had so I can make sense. <laughs> there we go, episode 11. Just a few more to go in the season before we get some hopefully, maybe possibly big season finale and I do want you with me there for those adventures. Remember, please hit subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it and take care of yourselves. Stretch your bodies. This is your reminder to go eat your protein and then come back and watch the next video in the queue. So thanks again, y'all, and until next time.